Doing just that as I prayed, celebrating what God has already done in these two, in these hearts, and letting them know this is the person that I have prepared for you. So now we're going to begin where it begins, in the book of Genesis. Uh, Genesis literally means beginning. A lot of folks don't know that, and this is what it says in the scripture. The Lord says, it is not good for man to be alone. I'm pretty sure you would say amen to that, wouldn't you, Mike? Amen. Uh -huh. <laughs> it is not good for man to be alone. So he says, I will make a helper suitable for him. And we're going to talk about what that word means in a little bit. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib that he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. And the man said, This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And for this reason, the scriptures say, a man will leave his father and mother and will cleave to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. And that is what we're going to see today. The two of you becoming even more one in spirit, one in life, one in love. Symbolically, as you came down different paths here, and yet you're going to go out together. I'm two becoming I'm one. Two strands. As God brings the two of you I'm together. Hot. Therefore, God is going to make you more in, one in spirit, one in life, and one in love. And for that reason, in God's eyes, today is a place of new beginnings. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Isn't that exciting? Now, as I think about you two, you have already had incredibly blessed lives, blessed families, blessed children. And yet here today, we stand to recognize that God's not done blessing you. He still had, even in the path of your lives, each other to now to discover and to share and to serve. And that is why we're celebrating an awesome, mighty God. I love Lamentations where it says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, and His mercies are new every morning. And that is what we're doing today. We're celebrating this place of new beginnings. What God is going to bring about today is a spiritual union. And this miracle is far more than a ceremony. It is what God is going to do in your hearts. Therefore, you two, marriage is not to be entered into lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and according to the agreement and the will of God. Therefore, I'm going to ask each of you a question of your heart and an intention. And if it is your desire, then I ask you to say, I will. Now, Mike, I'm always going to begin with you in our questions today. And the reason being is that the Bible says that the man is to be the head of the household. A lot of people get that messed up. <laughs> they don't understand what that means, and they get all nuha about it. You know what it really means? You and I are the first to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> you and I are the first to show our strength and our vulnerability, to say, I love you, and surrender ourselves. And so I'm asking you, first and foremost, for you to surrender yourself to this precious and beautiful lady standing before us. And so, Mike, do you receive Diane as your wife, as a gift from God? And you promise to love her and help her to become all that God has made her to be. And you promise to be faithful to her as God has been to you. Will you? I will. Diane, do you receive today Mike as your husband as a gift from God? And you promise to love him and help him become all that God has made him to be. And do you promise to be faithful to him as God has been to you? Will you? I will. Wonderful. Now, you two, very special. Obviously in family, you're here not just for matching clothes, but for a special occasion. <laughs> you are here, and I'm going to ask you, do you two, as dear family, promise to share your love, support, wisdom, and encouragement to these two in this marriage? Will you? We, we will. will. Wonderful. Now, will all of you, would you join me for standing for a moment, please? I have a question to ask you, because you're not here for a free lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask all of you. As friends, family, dear ones to these two, do you promise to share your love, support, wisdom, encouragement, and accountability to these two? Will you? We will. Oh, wonderful. Now freeze for a moment and turn and look. These are all your friends and family standing behind you, literally standing for you in this marriage. And what that tells me is no excuse for divorce. <laughs> None whatsoever, because we're lovingly saying we will kick your high knees and say, go humble yourselves and get right with one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Uncle, you can hear. All right. Come on, last. Come on. Okay, you two. Now, I'm going to share with you a passage that is kind of an interesting passage. When I share it, that people kind of first look and go, what's he doing talking about that one at a wedding? But it was the night in which Jesus was betrayed. And the scriptures say on that night, he said, hey, you know what? Before this night is over, all you guys are going to dig out. You're all going to run. And yet the Bible tells us that Peter answered and said to him, even though all may fall away because of you tonight, I will never fall away. And Jesus said to him, truly I say to you this very night, before the cock crows three times, you will deny me. And Peter said, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. But as we know in the story, six hours later, he did just that. And it begs the question, how could he go from saying, even if I had to die with you? And then he would, in fact, deny it. The answer, the scripture says it. 
Jesus, Jesus said, Keep watching and praying that you may not enter temptation, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You see, the love that Peter was confessing at that moment was that of passion. He was passionate. But as we've seen in our lives, and you two have seen in your lives, that passion, based solely on the flesh, can become weakened. And I, as a pastor, constantly see people denying one another, denying emotional intimacy, physical intimacy, sharing their hearts and treasures in other places that, other than in the two that God has called them to, to pour into. And so what happened in that scenario? Well, did it surprise Jesus? Absolutely not. He knew it would happen. We know today that we're not standing in front of perfect people. But what we do know is that Jesus then returned to him and said, Hey, Pete, do you love me? And he says, Yes, Lord. He asked him the second time, Hey, Peter, do you love me? He says, Yes, Lord. And he asked him a third time, Peter, do you love me? Now, was Jesus Lolo? No. Why did he ask him these three times? How many times did he deny him? Three times. And so he came again with all three and responded back with agape, unconditional love. You see, that's the difference today between a holy matrimony and a holy, one filled with holes, matrimony. One that is based on the unconditional love that Jesus gives you and I, who loves us just cause, loves us no matter what, knows that we will fall and we will stumble and we will deny, but he loves us just cause. And that just cause love is the love that we're going to celebrate in you two. And I'm going to ask you to every day to say, God, July 4th, you showed me you love me. And with that kind of love, help me to love my bride, my husband, for as long as we shall both live. Amen? Amen. Awesome. Now, two things that I want to give you an encouragement on, and that is whenever the difficulties come, somebody told me this years ago, and you too, being wise and experienced already, I would share this with you. Never get hysterical and never get historical. <laughs> <laughs> no need to bring up the past. <laughs> Jesus says, one thing I do, forget what lies behind and press on towards what lies ahead. And that is my encouragement for the two of you. Now, with the last time that Jesus said, do you love me? If you pay attention to the sex, he says, do you love me more than these? And this is where I want to jump to you today. He says, do you love me more than these? Most people don't pay attention. What was the these? Well, we know there were three things there. There were the boats. There were the disciples. And there was the fish. Now, first of all, the boats. The boats represent careers. And you know what? In my 26 years of pastoring, I've seen so many marriages get all bum up and new because of careers coming in the way. People have found their identities in their jobs rather than identity in the blessings that they have from God. Just once, I want a, a man to give me a business card that says, proud husband of so-and-so. But too often, their identity is found in what they do rather than what they've been blessed with already. And that is going to be the two of you. So when you wake up and Jesus says, do you love me more than you? Oh, Lord. I love you and I love Diane more than anything that this world could give me. Number two, the disciples. The disciples represent friendships. And the two of you today are going to say, you know what, there's a lot of important relationships in my heart and my life, but I'm going to pour my heart, first and foremost, into this project. If the Lord loves us unconditionally, I'm encouraging the two of you to do that. And number three, the fishes, well, come on, we all know what that, that stands for the pleasures. And the Lord is going to say, you know what, I love today. When you share your vows in a moment to each other, I love you more than any career could ever give me. I love you more than anything that I could gain from this world, any other friendship or latter relationship. And I'm going to pro provide with you myself. Are you ready for that? Good. Ready to do that? All right, you two. Okay, now, Mike, I'm going to encourage you to repeat after me these vows of love to Diane. Remember, look at her because I'm already married. <laughs> <laughs> I, Mike, I, Mike, receive you, Diane, receive you, Diane, as a gift from God, as a gift from God, to be my lawful wedded wife, to be my lawful wedded wife. I promise that I will love and cherish you. I promise that I will love and cherish you in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, for richer and for poor, for richer and poor, and will cleave only unto you, and cleave only unto you, as long as we both shall live, as long as we both shall live. Diane, repeat after me. I, Diane, receive you, Mike. I, Diane, receive you, Mike. As a gift from God. As a gift from God. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. I promise that I will love and cherish you. I promise that I will love and cherish you. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer and for poorer. For richer and for poorer. And will cleave only unto you. And will cleave only unto you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Amen. Amen. Now you two, again, are such a reflection and a blessing to all of us here today. 
on love and trusting in love and stepping forth in love. But even as seasoned lovers, allow even a young punk to encourage you to remember that love in many ways is like a muscle. It can atrophy, but the more that you work it out, you keep it fresh and strong. So keep that date night. Find that one night that you're going to make sure he shaves. <laughs> and you take this dear precious lady out and let them see the beautiful woman on your arm and let her know that you're proud and keep that date night that romantic part of this element of this marriage until God calls you home amen amen alrighty now what tokens do you have to announce to the world your love for each other rings